patients are presenting with tricuspid regurgitation and historically we haven't had a method or tool to determine which patients are at highest risk for mortality. Tricuspid regurgitation oftentimes presents in patients with multimorbidities, so it can be quite difficult to tease out if symptoms are coming from the tricuspid regurgitation itself versus from their COPD, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, et cetera. Our key takeaway message is that we have created a simple eight variable score to use in patients with moderate or more tricuspid regurgitation to determine their risk for all cause mortality over 10 years and potentially identify those who might benefit from intervention on their tricuspid valve. My name is Kyla Lara Breidinger, and I'm joined by my colleague, Dr. Soren Pizlaru. Uh, my name is Soren Pizlaru. I'm one of the cardiologists at Mayo Clinic, and I had the privilege to, to work with uh, uh, my younger, uh, very talented uh, colleague, Dr. Kyla Lara Breidinger. The title of our manuscript is Tricuspid Regurgitation Impact on Outcomes, or TRIO, a simple clinical risk score and this manuscript will appear in Mayo Clinic Proceedings. Our study looked at a large cohort of patients, over 13,000 with undifferentiated moderate or more tricuspid regurgitation and found similar increasing mortality with increasing severity of tricuspid regurgitation. We then used multivariate analysis to look at factors for all-cause mortality and found the following eight factors to have this most significant association with mortality. That was age 70 or greater, male sex, creatinine two or greater, congestive heart failure, chronic lung disease, an AST level of 40 or greater, a heart rate of 90 or higher, and severe tricuspid regurgitation. We then assigned one or two points depending on hazard ratio and added these numbers to compute the TRIO score. The score was associated with all-cause mortality, and we were able to separate patients into three risk categories. The score cutoff for low risk was 0 to 3, intermediate risk 4 to 6, and high risk of 7 or higher. A high risk score was associated with a 10-year probability of death of 79%, followed by intermediate risk of 63% death, and low risk or 40% for 10-year all-cause mortality. We were able to replicate these findings in two distinct, ge geographically distinct and independent cohorts across the country. The important part here is that we, we had the, the benefit of being able to screen thousands of patients from all the country. Uh, we ended up having nearly 20,000 patients in the two cohorts, and that gives us a perspective that is very difficult to, to uh, replicate in a smaller study. My problem when, when I go to work is that I'm facing chaos theory every single time. Uh, if you look at the patient and you look in their eyes and you just find out that they have tricuspid regurgitation, the question is, what does one individual do? Because we can look at this graph showing the, the age at diagnosis of TR on the x-axis and the time that it takes for a patient to die on the y-axis. They can be anywhere and everywhere. And what Kyla did with this fantastic study is bring order to chaos. So how does that impact the particular patient? Well, it does matter quite a bit because based on these eight very simple clinical variables that, that were identified in the study, we are now able to predict what one individual would do rather than feeling lost in the office. And, and then it's very important to note that tricuspid regurgitation doesn't do equal damage to all patients. We know it's in general bad, but patients who have significant other comorbidities seems to be influenced less or at all by the degree of tricuspid regurgitation, whereas the ones who have the least amount of other comorbidities seem to have the, the greater impact. And that should tell us that perhaps this is the cohort that we should actually focus on in terms of intervening. And the other cohorts, it doesn't mean we do not treat them, but maybe we should focus more on symptom relief rather than intervention on the tricuspid valve per se. So what is the next uh, step in this line of research. First and foremost, we need to validate the score. We, we think we are 
correct in our assessment based on so many patients, but we must prove this going forward. And this is going to be important for us. We also want to share the knowledge with as many people as possible. We want to have our colleagues in internal medicine, in family practice, the primary care physician adopt this tool as an easy method to gauge the risk of their individual patients. And for that, we are going to incorporate it into our electronic medical record. But also, once uh, this is uh, officially published, we will create a dedicated web page where everybody would be able to access it and do a simple calculation. Thank you, Dr. Pizarro, for your wonderful commentary. And again, we invite you to read our manuscript on our TRIO score, which again is a very simple eight clinical variable score to help identify risk in patients with tricuspid regurgitation. Thank you so much and feel free to reach out to any of our co-authors. And, and just to point out, this is the work of many, many people. Many of them are co-authors on this study, but many are not. And we are so grateful that uh, we are able to benefit from the work of so many people who are involved in creating the data sets and helping us understand and treat our patients better. Thank you. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about Healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.